The hospitality business is a billion dollar industry. And once upon a time, only those who owned the property were the ones that benefited from this massive market. But now today, you don't have to own property and still can amass some wealth. Our next guest is gonna show you how to do exactly that. All right, let's get it. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. I know you wanna watch this next video, but listen, if you are an entrepreneur, business coach, business consultant, or a small business owner who has a story and wants to learn how to create multiple streams of income from your story, I need you to text me right now, my book to 646-687-4152. That is my personal number. I have been an author for over 12 years. I've written 10 books. Four of them have been bestsellers, and I've sold over 100,000 books. But but I've also helped a lot of my clients take their expertise and put it into a story, then create multiple streams of income from that. So I wanna help you do the same thing. So text my book to 646-687-4152. All right, all right, let's go back to the video. Pay attention and listen, we about to teach class. Inside the boat, my man asks cash. So get your man right, Thursday nights, 8 p.m. to see him change your life. Millionaire mindset, the best on earth. So welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet. When I tell you, when you think about the billion dollar industry that is hospitality, hotels are starting to see a sharp decline. Why? Because Airbnb has come to that market with a $109 billion cap and they are moving in the upwards direction, right? And so what is the Airbnb market. What happens is that people are able to put their properties up and allow people to rent those properties, short-term rentals, and that is creating a disruption in the hospitality business that we've never seen before. But our next guest is gonna talk about how you can actually be a part of that disruption and you don't even have to own property. I got my guy, Kamoy Martin, is in the building. What's up, brother? Yes, sir. Listen, man, I'm absolutely honored and incredible to be here at yes, Inside sir. the Vault. Yes, you know sir. what I'm saying? Guys, just a disclaimer, this is actually a real vault, right? Like, <laughs> crazy, right? Yes, I just sir. thought it was like a dope backdrop. So. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I'm honored, my brother. Nah, thank you, man, for coming through, man. And I, um, you know, I, I love your story. Uh, I love what you do. Uh, because, you know, so this year, our family will probably take four vacations, yeah. right? Last year, we did two. Um, but every time I look at your, your social media, I'm like, damn, four is not enough, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, because you're always on vacation. You're a world traveler. Uh, and you were able to uh, create a life, right? You, you know, I, I mean, I've seen the Lambo. And all, right? You've created a, a great life for yourself. Yeah. Um, and you did it. Um, you know, and, and and again, we'll 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 get into the story. So I don't know if you own properties now, but I know majority of what you've done um has been uh through not even owning property by by leveraging the platform that's Airbnb yep. to be able to amass some wealth. And so I want to get into that. Uh, but before we even start, uh for our insiders, for those who are watching, um, who is Kamoy Martin? Yeah, man. Um Jamaican, right? Jamaican wow, wow, kid, wow, 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 bless up, bless up, bless you know up, saying? kid. Jamaican kid, right? I was born in Jamaica, but I was raised in Brooklyn, New York. You know, and you know how how that upbringing is like Caribbean, raised in New York. It's just, it's just different. Yes, sir. You know, um, and it's like my family they sacrifice a lot to transition from Jamaica to go to the United States. And the thing is, they're very school oriented. And I think most immigrant, you know, households typically tend to be very school oriented because. They sacrifice a lot to come to America, and they kind of feel like school is going to be like that that hope for their ch for their child. And I hated school, right? Like my my parents used to like, man, I don't want to say it on camera, but <laughs> they used to be just like really upset with me because I just never really took school seriously. And it's not like I was I was stupid or I just whatever, but it's just like school just never really excited me. But even though it didn't excite me, I still went and I did the bare minimum. 
right? And even going to college, right? Like I didn't know what I was gonna really take up in college, but I got a degree in biology. And after graduating from college, I went to Morgan State University in Baltimore. I never found a job in my field. And I ended up working at Department of Social Services as a caseworker, right? And if you know anything about just the social service field, like the pay, the pay sucks. I think social workers are some of the most like undervalued people in, in our communities, right? Because they're offering such an amazing service and, and helping just underprivileged and low income people. But the thing is, they're just not getting paid enough. And a lot of those people, they went to school for that. Right. I did it, right? So that like my like a frat brother hooked me up with that job. That was a hookup, but I was getting getting paid literally less than under thirty thousand dollars a year. But yeah, my student loan debt was like a hundred thousand. Right. So, but the funny thing is when I first got that job, I was excited because for anybody that goes to college and ends up in this mass amount of student loan debt, you're just praying for a job, right? Like you're just hoping and praying. Yeah. And that's, that was me. I was excited. I finally got this, this entry level job, but after a couple of years, reality kind of sat and I'm just like, wait a minute, I went through all these years of school. Cause how long we go to school for? Like I'm talking about pre-K, right? Sheesh. Like kindergarten, elementary school, what junior high. Like 17 years. A lot of years. Yeah, like you know, and, and we really don't really like it, yeah. but in the back of our minds, we're like, yo, after we do all this, we're going to end up working that that dream job. We're going to have that 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 amazing family, the white picket fence, and life is going to be good, right? That's why you sacrifice those late night, you know, hours to cram for a test, right? But that's, that's it wasn't like that. Yeah. And I felt like I was having like a midlife crisis in my early 20s. And I'm just like, damn, like this is, this isn't what I expected. Mm -hmm. And... I remember just kind of like just going to work, just just kind of frustrated. And like every single morning, like I would think and think to myself, like, how can I change? Like, how can I create that life that I really, really wanted? Even after like spending all this time and money getting these degrees, like, what do I do now? And at that time, I had a roommate, my fraternity brother, Taylor. He had just quit his job. Um, work, it was like a government job. And he was making about $50,000 a year. And at that time... A $50,000 job sounded amazing, yeah. but he quit his job to start like a construction business. And that inspired me because I was like, damn, bro, like you really just quit. Like he was like, yeah, man, I got the, I got this entrepreneurial dream. I'm gonna make it happen. And he was like, listen, man, you should read, you should read some books. Like, and he suggested a book called Success Principles to me by Jack Canfield. Mm. And I hated books at Yo, that time. Like that book is bro, a monster. that book changed my life. Wow. And yeah. that's probably the first personal development book that I ever read. Yeah. And it's funny because I said I hated books, yeah. but because I was such in a place of dissatisfaction that I was just like so open-minded to anything that can possibly just like, just help me change my life, yeah. right? Yeah. And I felt like when I was reading that book, like I felt like Jack was my homie. I yeah. felt like Jack was talking to me. Yeah. And I was so coachable to everything that he said in that book. Like he was talking about doing some things that I've never done before. Cause he was like, listen, man, if you want to, you know, live life on your terms, be financially free, actually like have ownership of like your future, your destiny. Yeah. He's like, listen, you're going to have to, you know, grow your mindset and like get out your comfort zone. He was like, um, if you want to build a business, you want to get more confident in you and your brand. So he was like, you got to get better at public speaking at that time, naturally an introvert public speaking is probably my biggest fear. Yeah. And he recommended um, going to something called Toastmasters. Toastmasters yep. And I remember in college hearing about Toastmasters and I was like, all right, what's that about? Oh yeah, public speaking. I used to avoid Toastmasters like with all costs, yeah, yeah. right? But when Jack said it, I was like, all right, I'm gonna do this Toastmasters thing. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yo, when you do Toastmasters, actually go all in, like actually participate. Mm -hmm. And I did that and it was just, it was terrifying, but that helped me so much. It helped me build my confidence. It helped me become more bold and actually helped me cultivate my voice in a way where I was able to, you know, just kind of share more of me and help other people, yeah. right? He said to do, like, um, take meditation classes. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I didn't do that, yeah, yeah. right? But he was like, listen, you want to get more control over your thoughts yeah. and your emotions. So I, I went to this place called the Baltimore Shambhala and I learned how to meditate, right? And like all these different things. He's like, become very intentional about your goals, yeah. you know, create, um, you know, not just writing down your goals, but have specific dates, be intentional, right? Like to a T. And it was like, I was following everything. So I was like, man, I want to quit my job. So I figured out how much money a month do I need to quit my job? I wrote that down. What day do I want to quit my job by? Okay, well, what do I need to, you know, just bury all these student loan debts to pay that off? I became very intentional. I had this, this journal of dates and just, just, you know, step by step by step. And I started starting these different businesses. And, you know, one thing that Jack said that, that really, really changed the game for me, he was like, create a mastermind group. Mm -hmm. And what that meant was, was find some like-minded friends mm -hmm. 
that had similar goals and values meet up and talk about different business ideas. Yeah. And I and I and what I do, I found you know a few of my friends that kind of were complaining about their jobs like me. Yeah. And we had, we would literally meet up once a week to talk about different ways how we can quit, right? And we would bring them all these different business ideas. And like one idea was like a hookah shop, right? And for a minute we used to think about how we could really get a, get a hookah shop right. popping. Right. Um, just all these different crazy ideas. But one of my friends, he talked about wholesaling real estate. And I was like, what's that? He was like, well, it's the ability to flip property and you don't have to, you know, have a lot of money. And I'm like, well, I don't have a lot of money and that sounds good. And like, I went back home and I like went on this crazy binge on like researching what wholesale real estate was. And like, by the next meeting, I was like, listen, y'all, we're creating this wholesale real estate company. Like, I was so excited. Yeah. And we got the LLC and then we started like, you know, um, sending mailers and marketing to like, you know, motivated sellers and things yeah. like that. And I want to say that was like around March, but by like, by June, we still had, we still didn't do a deal, but I had this crazy idea that I was going to quit my job. Mm. And I literally wrote a, a, wrote a letter to the supervisor saying they, this, you know, August 2nd, 2013 is my last day mm. at Department of Social Services. Mm. And I did not have any type of financial success in that business mm. or in any other ideas but in my mind, and I would never recommend anybody do this, to be honest with you. Like yeah. this, the, the, the safe way, the stress-free way is really to start a business, actually build some cash flow, have some success, actually have it make more money than what your job is paying you, yeah. right? And actually yeah. have some savings. But yeah. I was so sold out on this entrepreneurship thing, yeah. right? That I was like, I was going to make it work. Yeah. And <laughs> now, Wait, before you go yeah. there, though, <laughs> just for those who are watching... He's not recommending to do that because he's he he don't want to take the brunt if yeah, you do it and it don't work. But what I'm gonna say is if you are pulled like he was pulled, yeah. do it right because yeah. the truth of the matter is that we have a similar story where I jumped out, I took a leap of faith as well, um, and it was scary yeah. and I I hit my head, yeah. but I would do it again yeah. because it wasn't me that told me to take the leap of faith. There was something right, God, family, entrepreneur, right. I am greatness on display. If you know, you know. We made it the image and likeness of the most high God. So if God tell us to do it, right? And so not me, yeah. not Kamoy. Yep. If you're pulled and 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 you are tapped in with your higher power, yep. and 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 that voice tell you to do it, do not second guess that that, you know what I mean, that voice. Yep. Now back to, to our regular schedule program. That, that, that's real talk, man, yeah. because you know, if anything, if you know, God forbid anything, if times get rough or if things don't work out the way that you want to, yeah you're not going to give up or, you, or you're not going to be so quick to stray away because, again, you're, you're tapped into a higher a higher that? just thought process, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, like, you know, June came, well, yeah, we dropped off the the note or whatever. And like, as time progressed, it was like we were getting closer to that August date. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm ambitiously just marketing and just like doing everything that I can. And then, you know, begin August comes mm -hmm. and it's time to quit. Right, because I I've already <laughs> gave them the letter. There yes. wasn't turn no turning mm -hmm. back. Yeah, and I burn remember a burn a ship, man. Yep. I burn yep. the ship, and I remember like you know packing up my box and my supervisor supervisor asking me, so what are you gonna do? You know, and I was like, well, I'm being an entrepreneur. I got these real estate business ideas and stuff like that. She was like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's all right. Good luck. <laughs> right. Um, but as I'm packing up my box, right, I'll never forget, I had a couple coworkers come up to my my cubicle, right, and they'll say, like, you know, Martin, congratulations. That's what everybody called me back there, Martin, right? You know, congratulations. Uh, I'm not sure really what you're going to do, but, you know, I just wish you nothing but the best. But one lady, she was like, you know, Martin, I'm so proud of you because you're actually leaving here to go out here and do what you want. Yeah. I said to myself that I was going to quit this job 10 years ago, mm -hmm. but... I just got stuck here. Yeah. And I had all these goals and all these aspirations. And it's I just kind of felt like I feel like it's too late. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And of course I told him it's never too late. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But the thing was, I felt a lot of fear, mm. uncertainty. Mm -hmm. But when she told me that, it 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 gave me, it gave me peace. Mm. Because I was like, so when I leave out these doors, I don't know what's going to happen hundred percent. Yeah. But what I do know is for certain that I'm making the right decision. 100%, yeah. 
you know, and then from there, man, I just was just diligently working. Um, I got into network marketing like the day after <laughs> had a friend just like, you know, early, you got to get into this business. And I was, I was so open-minded, yeah. um, by, and it's funny, I started a real estate company with like four or five other people by, by the time, like end of August came, everybody had like <laughs> walked away from it. Cause we didn't do no deals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want to say I got my first deal that September. And um, it, it turned out to be like a fifty-five hundred dollar wholesale deal. Why do you work so hard? Cause I'm trying to get some money, punk. Man, why you keep calling these people? Cause I'm trying to get what I deserve. If you haven't wrote down your goals, if you never envision it, it will never happen. So if you haven't wrote down your goals, you need to manifest that and speak it to existence. Because the Bible says, "Speak those things that are not as though they are." Everything that you've ever wanted, everything that you've ever desired, any dream, any aspiration, all of it is now going to take shape. You know the importance of keeping your job because your job is your first business partner. Wall Street looks like us now. It's a battle cry. Wall Street looks like us now. It's the equalizer. If you can start training your brain to start thinking about solutions to problems and challenges rather than letting them slow you down, you are going to dominate this life. And when I learned that selling is not about convincing people to do something they don't want to do, selling is about empowering people and freeing people from their inhibitions so that they can do something they already desire to do. I cried too much to settle. I prayed too long to settle. I fought through too much to settle. I didn't make it through COVID to settle. I'm ready to step into everything that God's got for me. Now, we I didn't necessarily get rich, right? right. Or 5,500, but I gotta tell you, that, that 5,500 meant the world to me because it was like, number one, I had just quit my job. Right. And these bills... It's like it's like bills come faster when you don't have a job. Right, right. It's, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But and, but but that showed me like proof, like wow. Yeah, I can actually go out here and make it happen. Yep. Can, and you weren't making fifty five hundred a month ex ex at your job. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I wasn't yeah. making that at the job. Mm -hmm. So from there, man, and then also from reading that book, um, Success Principles, it led me to read more books, and I understood the power of growing your mindset because I was like, man. If one book gave me all this inspiration, all these tools, and just the, the just the, the the ability to push me in a in a better direction, what would happen if I read more books? Uh -huh. And I read these books. And they talk about go to seminars and conferences. Yeah. I was like, well, let me start going to these seminars and conferences. Yeah. And I was like, I'll go from event to event, read book after book, yeah. watch amazing podcasts like yours. And it's like every time I would tap into this information, I would feel myself growing to another level. Yeah. And I became like addicted mm -hmm. to like personal development and growth. And it's like, as I was building these businesses, I would build myself. Mm -hmm. And it was like a journey, mm -hmm. right? And it's like, again, I'll become intentional about my goals. And I just kept going, I kept going, I kept going, I kept going. And then even within the network marketing field, man, like that, that industry really changed my life, even though I'm not actively in it, but I had a good six year run. I built an organization of like 800 plus people. Um, you know, just built teams, you know, and not even just the United States, but even other countries. And it helped me become more of a leader. Yeah. It helped me be, it helped me cultivate my voice more. Yeah. Um, and it just kind of just, just helped me think bigger. Yeah. Right. Cause it, as I was building in that field, man, I, I would, I would hear, I would meet so many like amazing entrepreneurs and I would, and I would learn about the possibility of like, hitting higher levels, right? The first, like, I remember w when I went to a network marketing event, I met somebody making $50,000 a month, you know, sh shortly after I quit my job. And it's like seeing and hearing somebody make $50,000 a month at that point in my life was life altering. Yeah. Cause it was like, I, I didn't even think people that look like us can even make that type of money. Yeah. And I always tell people, man, like exposure is everything. Everything, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's why you you just got you got to get around the room. Uh -huh. You got to listen to these stories, right? Because once you understand what's possible, uh -huh. you're a lot more inclined to make it happen for yourself if that's what you want. Yeah. But when I started hearing about these stories, I was like, I want that. Yeah. Like it was like it's like it's like once the mind stretches, it can't go it can't back. Go back. It, it, and it's like, I, was that? what? Yeah. So it's like. And that, what, what, I, it, it wasn't going to happen. I knew it was going to happen overnight. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I, nobody in my family had ever made that type of money. Yeah. 
But I was like, you know, if it can happen for them, it can happen for me. Yeah. Right. So I just kept going to events, kept going to events, kept growing myself, kept building my business. And then eventually, I want to say like around 2017, uh, I was experiencing some business challenges, you know, outside myself, right? That, that I was outside my control. Yeah. And I had got, I had built up such a great, just residual income and I was traveling, had freedom, yeah. right? Like within that, that that network marketing company, I had car bonus. So I had a pay a company pay for Maserati, nice. right? Like, and and things were great, right? And I gotta tell you guys this, right? If you decide to really become an entrepreneur, business owner, whatever you want to call it, you have to understand that it's not gonna be perfect. Yeah. It's not gonna be a perfect journey. I know online we, it, it may look perfect, right? Glitz and glam, a lot of money, cars, jets and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, it's, it's, you got to build, yeah. right? And you got to learn, you got to grow and you may go through some failures or ups and, ups and some downs. You will go to. Right? And, and again, it's like, you have to have the understanding that, you know, you can make it happen. I don't care yeah. what it is. You can always make it through. Yeah. Um, so I was experiencing some challenges at that time. And, and I didn't know why it was happening because I was, I was, I never gave up. I was working hard. I was always growing myself. I was always doing the right things. But again, challenges within the business that had nothing to do with me. And and because of that, I had to kind of like, you know, kind of separate myself. But it was because I had put so much time to building a particular business. I was like, man, what, I, what am I going to do now? Um, and I had a good friend that was in the Airbnb space. And funny thing was, I was moving into a, a new apartment that was kind of like a level up for me. And it's crazy because it's like, I'm moving into a, a, a better apartment and level up in my life, but I'm having these business challenges. Yeah. <laughs> but what my friend does, she ends up getting an apartment inside that building for her Airbnb business. Mm. And at first it didn't really click, yeah. but after a few months of seeing the amount of cash flow that my friend was making, yeah. I was like, hold up now. I saw how simple it was for you to get this property. Yeah. And, I, and now I'm seeing the amount of money that you're making. And I was like, okay, I need something, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Let me look into this thing, right? And understand this, y'all. Like, life doesn't happen to you. It happens for you. Yeah. So, boom, I was experiencing some challenges. But because I was so open-minded, I saw my friend do something with an Airbnb. Okay, it was like timing. So, I was like, okay, let me check this out. And I, I did do my, do my research because my friend was fairly new. So I was like, I would ask her questions, but I had to still do my own like research, end up like buying a course and stuff like that. And I was just educating myself, man. And I was just, I was a student. I was figuring it out. And I ended up getting my first property. And yeah, I'll never forget that first notification of getting that booking. And yeah. I was like, oh, okay. like, yeah. it's, it's a real thing. Like yeah. it, it's actually simple. And from there, I was like, okay, let me get another one. Yeah. Right. And then I got another one. Um, and, but, and did you did you did you did you buy the properties? Did nope. you okay. just literally renting apartments and condos? Mm. Now I gotta tell you, in the very beginning, I was making great income, yeah, but I was doing some things not so the right way. Yeah. And here's what I mean. When it comes to this whole rental arbitrage thing, right? What does that mean? The opportunity of acquiring a property that's more so designed for a long-term rental, mm -hmm. right? We we rent that property out. We'll furnish it, make it look good, and we'll put it on a platform like Airbnb mm -hmm. or VRBO. All these, there's different short-term rental websites. Yeah. There's a right way to do this business, mm -hmm. and there's a wrong way to do this business. Mm -hmm. And what I mean that is, I did both sides. I did wrong and right, yeah. right? So I'm not pointing fingers when I say what I'm about to say. Yeah. You can get permission and consent from landlords and profit managers, mm -hmm. or you can go out here in front like you're going to live in the property mm -hmm. and then turn around and put on Airbnb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did both. Yeah, yeah. But the reason why now I get permission is because when I used to just not get permission, yeah. I ended up getting kicked out of places. Mm -hmm. And it's like I'm, I'm, I'm hiding. Yeah. I'm hiding my business, right? And the thing is, I'm every single morning, I'm, I'm hoping I don't get caught. Yeah. And you don't want to run your business like this, right? And I'm telling you this just out of experience. Right, right. But it's unfortunate, right? And I'm not going to say no names, but there are people out here teaching people to do it that way. Yeah. To not get permission. Yeah. And the reason why I can never do that is because I know what I went through, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Like mm -hmm. looking at my emails, hoping a profit manager, right, doesn't email me and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm, I just caught your Airbnb yeah, yeah, guest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Once I was going through those challenges and I thought to myself, well, let me actually get permission. Let me actually cultivate the right words 
to these prop managers, to these landlords, so that way they'll actually want to work with me. Mm -hmm. They'll actually want me to acquire these properties yeah. and they'll know that I'm doing a business. They'll yeah. know that I'm utilizing for, you know, Airbnbs and other vacation rental websites. Mm -hmm. So that way there's transparency and we're building a relationship. Yeah. And the reason, why, the reason why that's so important is, let's just say you, you own an apartment building. Mm -hmm. I run the play, I, I, you know, I do my whole script. You allow me to get one apartment inside that apartment building. Mm -hmm. I handle business well. Yeah. Every time somebody moves out, you're going to be more inclined to give me more units mm -hmm. because you understand what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm taking great care of the property. Yeah. I'm getting professional cleaners to clean the property. Mm -hmm. Whenever they do inspections in the building and they look at my units, they always say, this is the best unit in the building. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I'm, I'm running the business. Yeah. Most people, they live there personally. They're not getting it professionally cleaned. Right. No, we're maintaining. We're keeping the place in for sale condition, mm. 365 days out the year. Yeah. So the thing is, we're we're a value, we're an asset to landlords and property managers when you understand the dynamics of the business. Yeah. But when you don't get permission, it's like they don't know what you're doing. So why would they give you multiple units? Yeah. Why? Why do you need more than one? You live in it. Right. right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So it's just so important, man. Like, and that's why, and that's why I always tell people, like, you know, I get people that reach out to me all the time mm -hmm. about like. How do I how do I start? Like they'll just ask me these questions. I'll be like, you know, educate yourself. Right, right. Right. So that way you don't have to go through those same just 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 hiccups and hurdles. Yeah. yeah you know? Yeah. So and and and, and let, let, let's unpack that a little bit, right? Yeah. Because like, you know, a couple of things that I've heard, uh, which I like again, I appreciate your story, is number one, um, you took a leap of faith. Yep. Right. Uh, you made a decision. You wrote it down, which yep. is very important that everybody does. You wrote it down. You set a deadline. And even not having it all figured out, you said, all right, I'm, you know, I trust you, God, higher power, universe, whatever you subscribe to, I trust. And so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take the leap. Um, you were rewarded yep. for you know taking that leap the first month, right? So August, you made the leap. In September, you know, you 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 got rewarded for, yep. for taking the leap, which is a really a short amount of time when, when we think about it. Now and it feels short, though. right? Absolutely, <laughs> it feel short, right? Um, and then now uh, you get rewarded again because coincidence or being in the right place, right time, energetic alignment is what I call it. Yep. You were you were aligned with someone that puts you in a business yep. that allows you to first of all gives you an excellent book. Anybody who you should read Success Principles. Uh, in fact, um, you know you know Success Principles has helped me mm. uh, live in abundance, right? Because there was a a a, a place where um, he tells you go to a store and buy a ninety dollars shirt. Right. He tells you like like, you know, a lot of times people scoff at buying expensive things, but go and feel what that like go in and see what that feels like. Right. Yeah. Um, and I remember the first uh, actually the first luxury item I bought wasn't even for me. It was for my wife. Yeah. I was like, yo, I'm gonna go in a Louis Vuitton store and I'm, and I'm gonna drop a bag on a bag. Yeah. Right. In my, I had it. But in my mind, I'm like, yo, I'm not going yeah. to spend all this money on a bag. Yeah. But I did it. Best experience ever. Yeah. Waited online. They greeted me my name. Yep. Like the experience is different. If you ever did anything luxury, yep. you like, yo. And I rem I got that from Jack Canfield book. And it allowed me to live in abundance because once you have access to uh, the, the finer things in life, yep. right? Finer experiences. Why would you mentally want to go back? Yep. Now... All I do is figure out how can I keep having those experiences, 100%. right? Yeah. And so now you read, you know, like alignment gets you to read this book. You read the book and it's now opening up your mind so much so that you're open yep. to try different opportunities. Yep. You get into network marketing. Network marketing uh, does very well for you, yep. right? Uh, you build a team, 800 people, you, you, you get in cars. So now you've access to a, a certain level of living. Yep. Um, and then something, you it, it, you know, you're, you're leveling up. Yeah. And at the time of your level up, Right, energetic alignment though. That's why, like, I like you will go through yep. bumps because it's darkest before the dawn. Yep. And so, as you're leveling up, it's no coincidence that you 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 know you 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 feel something because the network marketing served this purpose. Yeah. 
And then now you move into a building that you just so happen a friend moves into the same building yeah. and does Airbnb, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and so I just want to unpack that for everybody because I want people to understand, um, number one, that as you are walking in purpose, right? Meaning uh, that you don't have to see, you know, what Martin Luther King said, you, I don't, you don't have to see the whole staircase. You just got to take the step forward. So as you're walking in your purpose, um, all these coincidences, and I'm, you know, I'm being facetious as I'm, as I'm saying that, yeah. but all these coincidences that, that are happening, which is just energetic alignment, which is a reward for your obedience, yeah. right? Yep. Um, are, are allowing you to, um, you know, you know, you know, be guided into the next step, right? Yep. And so now fast, Fast forward me to um, what type of success have you had from an Airbnb perspective, right? So number one, you're doing rent ar arbitrage, yep. which means that you're not even, you're not pulling, I mean, you're pulling your credit a little bit for, you know, uh, to, to, to make sure you qualify to rent the property, yep. if you will. Um, but you don't have to... Um, put a lot of money down, right? So like there's usually one month rent, one month security, deposit, yeah. right? Deposit. Um, and so for somebody who, you know, is like, man, I want I want some cash flow coming in. You know, if you bought a property, um, now you, you're on the hook for that property. 20% 20, 20 down. 20% down, 30 year mortgage, whatever the case may be. Leases are usually year, year to year. Yep. Um, and so now you're able to quickly create cash flow for yourself. So take me to the highlight of what this business, what this obedience has has afforded Kamoy Martin. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, as I'm as I'm growing this the business one by one, of course, I'm I'm having to understand, you know, okay, I no longer want to, you know, not do this without getting permission. I still want to get permission so that way I can actually legally run this business. Um what kind of changed things for me too, because as I was starting the business, I was doing everything myself, right? Mm -hmm. Like I was cleaning the property myself. Like I, any type of issues were going on, I was running to the property. Like I was, I was a cleaner. I was a handyman. I was all these things above, right? Mm -hmm. And I had what I had to find out was, you know, true entrepreneurs and true business owners, they work on their business, not in their business. Oh, bars. You Say know? that one more time. Look at the camera. <laughs> tell, tell, tell the people in the back who ain't hear you. Listen, true entrepreneurs and business owners, they work on their business, not in their business. So I had to subscribe to the to the mindset of delegating and outsourcing. Because again, you know, bro, like we're Caribbean, right? We're so used to working hard, doing everything for ourselves. And, and again, if you truly want freedom, if you truly want to scale and grow, you're going to have to find other people to do certain tasks, right? And the thing is, sometimes we feel like, well, they're not going to do it as good as I am. And guess what? They're probably not. Mm -hmm. But if you want to grow, you're going to have to let go. Mm. Oh, that's right? another bar. If you, you want to grow, you got to let go. <laughs> it's a fact, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So boom, when I started, you know, hiring cleaners to clean the properties and, you know, whenever there's any issues, damages, any maintenance issues... I, Hired somebody to do that, right? Even hired people to run my community. I don't even talk to guests anymore, mm. right? Like, so I got people that talk to guests for me 24-7, 365. Mm. So I found people to literally fulfill every role within the business. Yeah. So now I'm able to scale up, get more properties, yeah. and I, I, can, I can literally travel the world whenever I want. Yeah. I can literally book a one-way flight, mm. and, and I don't have to worry about you know, coming back at a specific so that's day or big time, money talk though. Right. But and and the thing is, it's like, it's not that hard, yeah, right? But the yeah. thing is, but it, it's it's a, it's really mental too. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's it's finances, but it's really mental, right? It's really like like passive income isn't just cliche. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like it's it's really a thought process that, you know, you you want to systemize things. Yeah. If you create the right system, your income can be passive and you can have time and financial freedom. Yeah. You know, so, man, and I got to tell you, that's probably one of the most best parts of me when it comes to this business mm -hmm. is because and even when, it, even when it comes to launching a new unit, mm -hmm. I've literally been out the country and I've launched an, an Airbnb because mm -hmm. I have my handyman. I'll literally ship things, you know, order all the things online yep. and I'll ship it to my handyman. Yep. He'll bring it to the spot, yeah. furnish it. And it's like, all right. Photographer, boom. Photographer mm -hmm. goes, get the pictures, send it to my assistants. They, mm -hmm. they upload the pictures and yeah. it's like, all right you know, turn on the listing, yeah. bookings. And right. it's like, I can do all this from out the country. Right, yeah. Right? So it's yeah. like, I love it, man. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. And so uh, how many units do you have currently now? Currently 15. 15. And then what, what would you say has been um, sort of like the, um, the, the highlight of your success doing Airbnbs? Yeah. Well, number one, really tapping into the, the whole automation and systemize, systemizing it. So that way, 
I I can grow and it doesn't have to feel like I'm doing everything, right? Because for a lot of people in their mind, the reason why they're not growing, whether it's their Airbnb business or just the business in general, is because they feel like the more they grow or the more units they get, the more they have to do. Yeah. yeah. No, it's just yeah. have a team. Yeah. yeah. Right. And 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 then so, you know, right now somebody's watching, right? Who uh, you know, is in that space where uh, you know, a lot of a lot of our insiders um, you know, work nine to five. Yeah. Uh, they want to start a business. They don't. They don't know how to start a business or whatever the case may be. Uh, what is your advice to them, right? Because majority of the time, um, people are not starting the business because one, they, they might not have the time. Yep. Um, number two, um, they may not necessarily have the capital. Yeah. Right. To to start the whatever business they want. Yeah. Um, you know, what would your advice, you know, be to that person? Yo, I'll say the, the 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 two most important things is information and belief, mm. right? That's that's literally two things that hold people back. Mm -hmm. If you just say, "Hey, listen, I'm gonna constantly educate myself, and I'm gonna get the right information, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna put myself in the right environment to 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 grow my belief system," I gotta tell you, like. You know, the information, right? It's probably easy to to read or or to listen to a podcast or to or go to a seminar and take notes and like read. I mean, people are are used to gathering information. We've been going to school for years, right? Mm -hmm. People can cram for a test, right? Or whatever, study for study for a particular course. But the thing is, if the belief ain't right, nothing's gonna be right. Mm, yeah. And I think belief is probably one of the most underrated things of our times. Like the reason why people achieve the level of success that they have or don't have is because of belief. Yeah. And the thing is, so many people, they try to do everything on, they try to do everything themselves or they try to literally run their whole life based on their own belief. Mm. I can't, see, Kamoy can't rely on Kamoy's belief. Mm. I, I, I need to subscribe to a higher level belief, mm. whether that's God, finding mentors, mm. coaches. I constantly need to get around people that are thinking bigger than me yeah. and that are believing bigger than me. Yeah. And the thing is, like, let's just say you're making, you know, $100,000 a year, mm -hmm. right? The reason why you're not making, you know, $250,000 a year yet mm -hmm. is because you're not believing. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be able to make $250,000 a year, get around somebody that's doing that, if not greater. Right. Because the thing is, you can borrow somebody's belief. Right. Say, and, and again, the, the number is relative. Yeah. It could be two hundred fifty grand a year. It could be two hundred fifty grand a month. It could yeah. be a million dollars a year. It could be a million a month. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Whatever goal that is that you want to achieve, yeah. you need to get around people that are already achieving that, if not greater. Yeah. Because eventually, it's going to become normal. Mm. Even though you don't have it, yeah. you're going to connect. Like, I could shake your hand. Like, you're making a lot of bread. Mm -hmm. like, it's like, mm -hmm. if, I'm, if I'm talking to you yeah. on a consistent basis, yeah. and I know that you're making this high level of income, yeah. It's going to, I'm going to, I'm like, you know what? Like Ash Cash, like he's a smart guy, but like he's not that much smarter than me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's like, yeah. you know, like, yeah, I, you're doing your thing, but it's like, yeah. we're humans. 100%. You pump blood just like me. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We come from similar backgrounds. So it's like, you need to get around people as much as you can. Yeah. So that way you can get that energy, you get that belief yeah. and just understand things are normal. Yeah. Right. Because a lot of times people are really successful and they don't even understand why they're successful. Yeah. But it's just because they they just so happen to be in a particular environment yeah. that gave them the belief to achieve certain results. Yeah. There are some people that they they know why they're successful yeah. because they just did not have the belief, but yeah. they were intentional about growing their belief system. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And I and I love that you say said that because um, you know, I pay for mentors all the time. And that's I honestly. Um, I'm getting information from them, but really what I'm doing is borrowing the belief system, yeah. right? I find mentors who have done what I want to do or are doing what I want, you know, what I desire to do. Uh, and I, and, and I'm around them so much that, you know, like, like I might look at them when I first met them, they were on this pedestal for yep. me. Right. And the more, uh, you know, the more I'm around them, not that they're coming down to my level, I'm actually going up to their level, right? Yes. The more and more I'm around them, the more and more I believe until we get to that space, to your point, right? I'm special, but I'm not special, yep. right? The only thing that makes somebody special is their belief, yep. right? The, the more successful you are, the stronger your belief in yourself, yep. right? And then I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm kind of borrowing that. Yep. And so, you know, you know, for, for, from that perspective, people... Um, 
you know, should borrow beliefs, right? Yeah. Like find, and, and that's the other thing too. A lot of times, you know, people are afraid to borrow belief systems because of their ego, mm. right? Which Wayne Dyer says, ego is edging God out, right? Yeah. If somebody has a belief system and that belief, so like, so like you know, uh, you know, it, my belief system is that abundance is your birthright. Yeah. I didn't make that up. It's in every scripture. It's in the Bible. It's in the Quran. The secret says it, right? So whatever you subscribe to, it tells you that abundance is your birthright. And so if if that if that's my belief system and I'm subscribed to that belief system, well, if I'm watching somebody who's living in abundance, I'm saying, okay, this person is living into in, in, in abundance. Yeah. That means they're tapped in closer to their God self. Yes, and so sir. let me see what how they're operating so I can get closer to my God self, yep. right? Yep. Uh, but a lot of times people have ego, right? God is is literally, God is putting somebody in your face, yeah. not to not for you to be jealous, right? Thou, thou shalt not covet. Yeah. Not for yeah. you to, to, to look at somebody else and wish it was yours. It's to is to demonstrate that you could have anything, right? Yeah. And so, yeah. but 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 people are afraid to collaborate. They're afraid to connect because their ego is like, nah, I'm I'm gonna try to figure this thing out. Yeah. That this person already figured out, yeah. and you just gotta be be next to them, right? And so if you could do it all over again, right? Yeah. Would you choose Airbnb again? Like if you had the opportunity to do anything, you know, in, in your life, yeah. would you choose uh, Airbnb again? Yeah, 100%, man, because, you know, number one, it's, it's not that complex, mm. right? Yeah. With, and then also, too, because it's not complex, you know, it, it, it's it's really simple to get... It, it's simple, but again, you have to educate yourself to understand the, the the little inner workings. But it's simple enough to where as though you can you don't have to have you know a lot of business experience. Yeah. You don't have to have you don't got to get a degree, yeah. right? You don't yeah. have, even have to have a lot of capital. Yeah. You know, and it's pretty simple to grow as well. Like I've had students, right, literally get their first property in less than one week, mm, right, yeah. with having very little to no business experience. Yeah. You know, but it's because they subscribe to the right information yeah. and they execute it. Cause I don't want to just say boom, just because they they got information. Right. It's, it's not a lottery ticket, right. but they subscribe to the information, yeah. executed, yeah. boom, able to get their first property in less than one week. Yeah. Able to start creating cash flow for their for their family and their kids. Yeah. Right. And then if you and then if you systemize and automate it, yeah. it could be passive. Yeah. Right. I like my thing is like. Once you once you find a way to make money in your sleep, mm. you don't want to like making money. Other ways is cool, yeah. But like, there's nothing like sleep money. <sighs> you know, mailbox like, money is the best money. My mentor told me years ago. He said, "Come on, you need to find a way to make money in your sleep, or you're gonna work until you die." Oh, bars, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, that, that's all I need to hear. Yeah. Hello, yeah. like what? I, I don't want to work until I die. Right. I see way too many people do that. Right, right. You know, what I'm and saying? so and, and so you mentioned you mentioned your students. So, so talk a little bit about your program, right? Because you know, one of the things that uh, you've been able to do um, is really, uh, you know, you've been blessed. Yeah. Um, and so you started a program uh, that that is also blessing others, right? And, yeah. And and I'll preface this this way, right? Because I know um, that a lot of, I mean, you actually mentioned it too. That I know a lot of like courses and programs and things of that nature get a bad rap now yeah. uh, because during, I want to say during the pandemic, there were a lot of bad actors. Uh, who just saw an opportunity, opportunity. Yeah. Um, to, you know, yeah, I mean, I'll say it, take advantage of people yeah. um, and we're just taking people's money, but we're not delivering on what they said these people would get from their program. Yeah. Um, but you have a program uh, that, you know, like you mentioned, one of your students that they have success and you have receipts. Like I see it all the time where you're posting um, actual videos of your students saying, hey, I just closed on my first Airbnb and I just did this. I just did that. Um, talk a little bit about about your program and the benefit of, of, yeah. of people joining your program. Yeah, for sure. And here's what I'll tell you guys. To be honest with you, I, I never had a I never had the 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 desire to be a course creator yeah. or create programs and stuff like that. To be honest, I just really didn't, right? Like I was enjoying building my business and making money and traveling. Yeah. But I had a friend, you know, also fraternity brother, reach out to me. He's like, man, you know, we've talked about this before, but can you just really teach me this business? And before he said that to me, I've had people DM me like, hey, teach me, teach me. And I'm like, all right, cool, cool. But I don't, again, I didn't really, you know, want to get into that space. Not that I didn't want to help people, I just didn't have a desire to, I don't know, create a course. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was so adamant. It was like 11 o'clock at night, and I'm like putting together an Airbnb. 
And he's like, listen, bro, I really need you to teach me this, man. Like, I don't want any time to go on and I don't learn this. Yeah. And I was like, it's funny because, and when he said, that, I was like, you know, I thought about creating like a program, bro, you know, but it's like, I don't know. You, but because you, man, like, I don't know, maybe I'll do it. He's like, listen, I, I need you to. Yeah, yeah. So he kind of lit that fire under me. And it was like, from that conversation, I want to say like a couple of weeks later, I had like created a program. Um, and yeah, man, and, and the goal behind this program was literally to just, all the questions that people answer me, <laughs> ask me my DMs and how, 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 even for the, the sake of my friend, I want to kind of lay out the, the step by step by step blueprint from taking you from point A to point Z. If you have no business experience, if you have business experience, if you've done this before at a small level, or if you've never done this before, I want to really teach you how exactly to go about doing this, how to start it, how to scale it, you know, how to research and find the right places. Cause you gotta understand where to find the right properties, right? right? You gotta, you also wanna understand where can you find cleaners? Where mm -hmm. can you find a handyman? How can you build a team, yeah. right? How, how can you make your, your listing attractive? So that way it's constantly getting booked up and creating cash flow, yeah. right? Just all the little small pieces that you could put together and, and build yourself mm -hmm. a business. So that way you create passive income. Yeah, yeah, no, I love that, love that. And so Limitless, right? Limitless uh, BNB Masterclass is the course. Um, and so let, let, let's let's uh, switch gears a little bit. Um, you know, with with all of the success that you've had, um, I mean, you, you know, you dress good, got nice watches, Thanks, you know what I'm saying? Bro. You know, <laughs> I, I, I seen the delivery of the of the Lambo and things of that nature. What would you say have been, I and mean, you travel good too, yeah. right? What would you say is the most extravagant thing you've done with money so far? The most extravagant thing? I would have to say the Lamborghini. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have to say again, my Lamborghini truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then what would you say is the most impactful thing you've done with money? Hmm, the most impactful thing that I've done with money. Um, I have this thing where I do like a rent giveaway mm. and uh, and I'll like pay, pe like I'll pay people's rent, mm. you know? Um I'll say that's probably the most impactful thing, wow. right? Wow. Yeah. And, and and what what made you what made you do that? Like, what made you want to pay people's rent? I'm, I'm gonna be very transparent with you. So, like, I wasn't always the most giving person, mm. and maybe it's because I come from a, I don't know, just a an immigrant household or a third world country, and you know, we did we weren't born rich. So, like, as we made as we earned money. It was like, we want to keep money. We want to hoard it. Yeah. Because it's like, we don't know if it's going to like <laughs> disappear. Yeah. Right? So, and, and I wish I could say that I was like the 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 the, the top tither of the year when it came to church, right? Yeah. But I just wasn't. Yeah. Um, I read this book called Seed Money, mm. right? And I and I learned about this book from, um, from Bob Proctor. Mm. And that book changed my life. That book changed my whole perspective when it came to money. Yeah. And what I when I when I really understood and learned the power of giving, yeah. and and how not only does it really bless people, but what it does for you as a person. Mm, absolutely, yeah. I just became a lot more free and willing to give money. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, one hundred percent. And 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 that's honestly what really compelled me to do that. Yeah. And and it's also compelled me just to be more giving in general. Yeah, no, I love that. And so right now, you know, Kamoy, you know, is is living living a life, um, you know, is blessed in his life, um, is also blessing others, helping others, allowing others to create, you know, uh, financial freedom for themselves and their family. Um, if if Kamoy could go back to his eighteen year old self, yeah, uh, what what advice is today, Kamoy, giving eighteen year old Kamoy? Man, just. Just believe, believe faster. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I used to be that person. I was just like, I knew that I was, I had talents or I knew that I had something inside of me that can be of value to this world. But I feel like for a lot of, it's kind of like for a lot of people, they're just wondering like, what, how much success can they really create, right? Like, may, especially if you weren't like brought up in a very, not just like my parents were, were well, like well off, yeah, right? Like, yeah. so, like they were good. They provided for us, but the same, but it's like, when you're like watching TV and you're seeing people in the NBA, NFL, or like that's artists, you tend to have this certain perspective of success. Yeah. And when you feel like maybe you're not in that household of that high level of success, you kind of wonder, well, well, how much success I can I create? Because 
I came from just kind of like, I guess, I guess an average level of success. Yeah, yeah. And what I'll tell that 18-year-old Kamoy is, listen, you can literally create as much success as you want. You can make as much money as you want. You can impact as many, any, as many people as you want, even though you're an introvert and like you're not you know, super confident when it comes to speaking and stuff like that, like all that can change. Like you can literally improve and expand upon anything that you feel like you're lacking. And it's like, that's what I'll tell him, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you can reinvent yourself. You feel me? Like you don't have to be like, you can like, it doesn't matter where you are. Yeah. Yeah. Like at all. It doesn't bank account wise, like who you are, you can literally develop and become whoever it is that you want, but you have to be intentional. Yeah. You got to do that inner work. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love that because I think that whether it's a young person watching right now or even if there's an older person wa- ra- watching right now, um, I think a lot of us get stuck in our history. Yeah. Um, instead of our now, right? And, well, you know, why not even the future, right? Because, you know, you know, both are. Uh, uh, figments of our imagination. Yeah. Right. Your history is gone. There's nothing that you could do to bring that back. And even your future uh, is something that you're making up. So you don't even know what your future is going to look like. Um, and so a lot of us get stuck, right? We're stuck on the history. We're stuck on the future. But, uh, you know, it, it, you know, I love that you said you could reinvent yourself, right? Because the reinvention doesn't happen in the past, nor does it happen in the future. The reinvention happens now, yep. right? Like at, at this moment that you're hearing our voices, you can make a decision like right now and say, you know what? My life is going to be better. You know what? I'm going to stop eating bad, right? That, oh, you know what? I'm going to stop drinking. Oh, you know what? I'm going to stop watching whatever, you know, you know, you know, negative things. I'm going to start, you know, you know, looking at more positive things. I'm going to read more. I'm going to, you know, take action towards my business. Like that's, those are now decisions. Those are, those are decisions that you make in the future. So I love that you said, you know, you know, that's what you would do. All right. So we're going to go to our lightning round. Uh, and in our lightning round, what we do is we take bank terms. Mm. Uh, I mean, because we're literally inside the vault. Literally. Uh, and we're going to take bank terms and we're going to flip them, right? Um, and so the first term we're going to use is deposit slip. Uh, a deposit slip, you you know, you know, walk into a bank, you fill out the slip, your form, and you say, hey, I want to make this deposit, and you make the deposit into the bank. But for us inside the vault, uh, a deposit slip is a uh, money mistake, a slip up, right? Mm. What would you say has been the biggest deposit slip that you've made in your journey so far? Probably not reinvesting into my business faster. Mm. You know, the thing is, um, as you start making money and you start building a business, it, it, it's like, especially when you start getting like large sums of money yeah. fast, yeah. faster than you would with a job, yeah. you tend to get excited and want to splurge it. Mm, yeah. Because yeah. it's like, you may not, you may experience getting a, more money than you've ever experienced in your life. And you're like, damn, well, if I could do this, I could keep doing right, it. Right, right. And you're like, ah, oh, let me, let me go to Louis. Right, you know? right, right. <laughs> I earned this. Right. right? You want right. to reward yourself. But the right. thing is, man, it's like, that's good. And guess what? You should reward yourself, right? But to a certain capacity. Yeah. If you want to grow faster, yeah. like it, it's best to like when you get those, when you start getting those wins, to really reinvest in your business. Yeah. Because the faster you do that, the faster you grow, and the faster you'll be able to really, really, really reward yourself. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely something that I, you know, if I could change anything, yeah. reinvest faster, yeah. Yeah. you know? All right, perfect. Uh, second term is charge off, right? Um, a charge off, you know, you borrow money from the bank. Uh, you don't pay the, the bank back. The bank is going to make the attempts to get the money back. But at some point, they can be like, you know what? I'm washing my hands. I'm going to charge this, this debt off. Uh, but for us here inside the vault, uh, we want to know what type of people or mindsets did you have to charge off during your journey? Ooh. Ooh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I, I would say, so for me, right? I know where I'm at in my life. At that point in my time, at, my, at that point in my life, I wasn't making the type of money that I wanted. Um, I understood that I wanted to change everything. I wanted to change my mindset. I wanted to change my habits. I wanted to make more money. I wanted to get out of debt. I wanted to really start, you know, living the life that I wanted. But if I'm around nothing but people that are always talking about just partying and just turning up and gossip and all these different things, low vibrational conversation. Mm. But I want change and I want to get to this destination. I had to charge off some people that weren't in alignment with where I wanted to go. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because if I didn't, I was going to be a victim of staying in the same place. Mm. So it's like, 
Yeah, that's yeah. that's heavy talk, man. I like like I hope y'all catching a lot of this stuff because uh when you talk about vibration, um that is like life is a life is energy. Yeah. Um and you will only attract the energy that you are you allow around yourself, right? right. You will only attract um, at the level of vibration that you allow yourself to be around, right? Which is why, you know, I talk on the show a lot about masterminds, right? Yeah. Um, if you read think so so masterminds aren't a new thing. If you read if you read Think and Grow Rich, that was written, what, 1929, yeah. right? Uh, you know, Napoleon Hill talks about the power of the mastermind. Um, and so for for those here listening, you know, do not um, think that, oh my God, they keep saying mastermind, 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 as if, you know, it's this new thing that we just made up. No, yeah. it's been around. People have done it. Um, and it is so powerful because if you want to be intentional about the vibration that you're around, sometimes uh, you pay for it. Yeah. Right? Sometimes you say, you know what? I want to be around a certain level of energy, and so I'm going to pay to be around this energy yeah. uh, because uh, low vibration is free. Mm. Low low vibration Come is on. free. Come on, right? Like you don't like 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 we in Atlanta. Yeah. Unfortunately, Atlanta has a, a homelessness problem. Yeah. And so when I'm walking in the street, I'm walking by the guy who's cursing. Mm. I ain't got. To, I ain't had to pay for that. Yeah. Right, and yeah. so we we're, we're occupying the same space because we're in a free space. Yeah, but if I'm in a space that I pay for, the guy, the homeless guy's not there. Mm. The guy with mental health issues is not there. Mm. The the negative Nancy is not there. Like uh. the, like it actually, you know, you know, being in a, in a space where you're paying to be around high vibration actually, uh, you know, protects you from being in that low vibration. So I just want to say that. You know what I mean? It's real tough. Uh, last but not least, ATM, right? ATM, you go to the bank, you put your card in, you take money out of the bank, right, with, with your ATM card. Uh, you've been giving us a lot of gems. We've been taking a lot of positive information from you, but we want more, yeah. right? Our insiders <laughs> want more. Uh, and so for us, ATM is another teachable moment. If you could look in that camera and give our insiders one more gem, one more jewel, another teachable moment that's going to help their life get to that next level. Yeah, man. Um, you got you got to make a decision. You got to make a decision. And when I say you got to make a decision, think about the word decide, right? Sounds like pesticide, genocide. Kind of has that same front word, I'd, right? So that stands for killing off something. When you decide, you kill off any other opportunity but not to make that thing happen. You need to decide that you're going to win. You need to decide that you're going to build that business. You need to decide that you're going to become financially free. You need to decide that you're going to take ownership of your destiny. You need to decide that you're going to create that generational wealth for you and your family. Because guess what? It's not going to be easy. And just because it may feel good when you do it, it may not feel good next week, next month, and next year as you're going through the process. And when you decide, nothing gets in your way. You need to decide to get in the room, right? Like we've been talking about it throughout this whole entire podcast, right? It's like, listen, you can have everything that you want. You can have all the money that you want. You can create the life that you want. But it's like, when are you going to really decide that you're, you're number one, you're already that person? Because you have to believe that you're that person before you even become that person, right? But you got to decide on doing the daily and the weekly and the monthly and the yearly activities in order to make that happen, right? Two things you, you need to absolutely make a decision on. Number one, if you're building a business, you need to decide that you're going to do the IGAs, the income generating activities every single day. So many people, they build a business and they get so caught up on the, let me figure out a name for my LLC. Let me, let me figure out the, the colors for my brand or my logo. And that stuff is cool. It's important. Yeah. But if you're not doing the main things that make your business money every single day, what are we doing? You're not building. Your business won't grow. Yeah. You need to figure out what those income generating activities for your business is. And you need to do that every single day and decide and commit to do that every single day, yeah, right? Yeah. And then you need to decide on, on doing the, the mental, right, changing activities. Like, what are those things that are literally going to change your mindset, yeah. right? And you need to do those things, I would encourage, every single day. Listen to my man Ash Cash podcast yes. every single day. Going to the conferences, going to the seminars, right? As much as you can. Don't just go to one event. Yeah. You get hyped yeah, yeah, yeah. one week, one month. You're like, man, nothing happened, right. right? It may not be just one event. Right. 
You know what I'm saying? It took me, it took, it took me a lot of years to be broke, mm -hmm. right? So I, it wasn't going to change just because I went to one event, Thanks, yeah. right? So it's like I had to constantly show up, constantly get into the rooms, con finding a mentor, yeah. finding a coach. We don't just say this because, you know, maybe just because I offer mentorship or a coach or a yeah. coaching program because I want your money. Listen. I want this to be very clear. No one has to get my mentorship right. or any of my programs or courses. Right. I'm only preaching stuff that I personally Absolutely. do. Absolutely, yep, 100. Right. So the thing is, you got to make a decision to grow your mindset, man, and do those those action steps that's going to actually make you money and build a business. Yeah, 100. So a couple of things, right? If your coach don't have a coach, they don't deserve to be your coach. Facts. You know what I'm saying? And if your coach needs your coaching in order to live their life, then don't hire them. Facts. Right? Because yeah. whether whether I offer mentorship or not, I'm yeah. Gucci flip flops. Hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? We know the information. Exactly. Yeah. We know the information, <laughs> and we don't we don't have to give none of it. Yeah. And we still good. Yeah. Family good. Four one k's good. Retirement accounts good. For sure. Children. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I appreciate you for that. All right, y'all. Look, Kamoy Martin. Uh, you know, definitely check out his program. If if it aligns with you, right? You don't have to yeah. do it. If it aligns with you, then tap in. If it doesn't, don't. Uh, make sure you go to InsideLimitlessBNB.com to check out, you know, how you could tap into the rent arbitrage uh, industry, make money without actually having to own property. He'll show you, right? Hove did that, so hopefully you ain't got to go through that, right? So he went through the trials and tribulations, so he's going to teach you how to do it. Uh, my brother, oh, man, I, I enjoy uh, this interview. Um, a lot of knowledge. Um, I hope people go back and watch it uh, because you actually um, dropped a lot of gems that may go over people's head, like a lot of metaphysical stuff that, I mean, if you know me, I, like, I truly believe uh, in, in the power of energy, yeah. the power of manifestation, the power of alignment, um, and even your story is a continuous uh, a journey of being energetically aligned with success, yeah. right? Um, and the last thing I'll say, though, too, is that, you know, uh, uh, we have to understand, like, I don't believe in negative or positive. I don't believe in good or bad. Um, I know that all things, everything, all things come from God, That's right? Nice. And so all things are working for my greater good. So even if uh, I'm in a space where something that we that we would quote unquote call negative happens in my life, mm. I know that it's just a setup for what God has planned for me yeah. and I got to go with the flow, right? I can't yeah. just be uh, appreciative for, for this, you know, for all all, this, the, all the win, the so-called wins, yeah. because even the negative things are actually wins because it's propelling me to that next level, right? Um, and so I wanted to say that, but if people wanted to tap in with you, uh, you know, follow you on social media, where can they find you? Listen, man, you guys can find me on Instagram, right? Kamoy, K-E-M-O-Y underscore Martin, M-A-R-T-I-N. Um, I'm on TikTok, the Kamoy Martin. I mean, Facebook, I mean, Twitter, all that good stuff, but mainly Instagram, right? And also you can subscribe to my YouTube channel too, right? Kamoy Martin. Yo, tap in. If you, yo, look, this guy got good energy. You know what I'm saying? He got all the TikToks, but he's like, come on, come with me. <laughs> he got, he got the good, the big smile. He's like, yo, come, <laughs> let me, let me, let me show you. Let me take you into my world. Let me show you, right? You can live vicariously through him until you tap into to something else, to that vibration. Yeah. And then you can actually, you know, you know, enjoy uh, bliss and, and, and abundance yourself. For sure. All right, y'all, we are closing out the vault. Another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash. Make sure you check us out on our website, InsideTheVaultShow.com. There, uh, you can subscribe. You can see all the back episodes. You can do all that stuff. Uh, I need you to rate. I need you to review. I need you to tell a friend to tell a friend. Uh, follow us on all social media platforms at Inside the Vault. Me, I am Ash Cash. Make sure you visit me, IamAshCash.com. Uh, follow me on all social media platforms at I am Ash Cash. Uh, and I'll see you next time for another awesome episode in God's will. Same time, same place. All right, y'all. Yes, sir. Peace. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You won't ask cash. You can catch it right here in the ball.